So I thought I'd talk today a little bit about some different u utilities that I use or have been looking into for getting pen input into a computer or that sort of thing, so into files and that sort of thing. One of the first things I picked up, and this was a long time ago, was a Wacom tablet. This is, it wasn't the high-end one at the time and it worked great with Linux out of the box. I think my wife got one as well and that one didn't work with Linux out of the box, but it had, it's been a couple years now, so I'm, I'm guessing Linux support is actually pretty good. But I just wanted to demonstrate what this does and it still does an amazing job of. Now, I'm not a, a particularly good artist, but I can draw little stick figures. Hey, you. So, and one of the things, whoops, I'll put that back. One of the things that, you know, different programs are fun to, to use, but MyPaint is a great, um, you know, open source way to get, you know, the thoughts on the page. And yeah, you can see that and that looks okay. Um, so yeah, this works great. Um, but of course, it's not so nice that you have, you know, where you're drawing and where you're seeing on the screen are two different places. Um, but one of the nice things about this is that you can do some, you can flip the pen over, you can do some erasing. There's some nice, like there's a secondary pen which allows, or a secondary button that allows you to pan around and, you know, draw more things here. This is a guy who's saying stop, I guess. He's going to be angry. Okay, whatever. So you can do all sorts of things and it's nice. There's buttons that you can press there. That's another button to just change colors. You can kind of, my paint is great because you can choose whatever you want for your, your buttons and everything. And it's nice to have the erasing. So, but we also, you know, it's not always practical to pull out this and pull out your computer and sit down, especially when you're sitting on the couch or something like that. Um, that's what's nice about the laptop. It's portable, it's whatever, but you know, you pair it with something else and it's less portable and it's less, oh, let me just grab it. So uh, one of the things we got a while ago um, for my wife and for her work was a Remarkable. So here's the Remarkable and right now it's sleeping. Um, if I start it up, let me make sure that there's no, um, so I'm pressing the button, power button is on the top, I was not hitting that one correctly. So because this might be, you know, yes, this could definitely be, you know, okay, and then here's a little pen. I don't want to show you any, you know, proprietary information right now. Okay, well, I definitely wanted to clear out some of the last bit with some of the personal, you know, uh, information that was on that. So here are some of my, you know, my pages and stuff that I've been working on. Um, random stuff in a previous lifetime. Uh, writing integrals and stuff is great. Let's see if I can do something. Um, D3R of, I don't know, D3R prime, N of R, N of R prime, R over R prime. And we're double counting, so make sure to get that half out front. So this is great. The Remarkable is really nice. Um, some of the things you can do with it, uh, you can open up a little. So this is their default note-taking app. It's great. Um, what I don't always like is if you have you have this eraser and you have kind of like two different modes. Let's see, so I think this is the this is the mode where you select something. Sorry, maybe you didn't see that. And then it'll just delete that. Um, hopefully there's an undo because I don't actually think I wanted to delete some of these things. Honestly, these are probably not even the greatest thoughts, so don't try and take these and use them in your own research. But um, there's another erase method where you just, you know, Oh, apparently that erases everything. I don't want everything to be erased. So one of the things that I would appreciate is not having erase everything as kind of something that's possible, but there is, you know, a, you know, erase part of things, and this actually works pretty good if you're just doing little bits. But the thing that's annoying compared to the Wacom 
um, the bamboo, you know, tablet that I have from long ago, you can't just flip your pen over and then use it to, to erase things. So that would have been nice, but that's not this particular um, e-ink type of pad. Um, but one thing that I don't like so much about this is that I do really feel like there's a lot of screen real estate being used by the buttons here on the left, and I would have preferred um, the erase button, like at least one of the not delete everything, maybe even both of the ones that are kind of nice, to be their own button, so I don't have to click twice before I go and um, erase things. That's just kind of annoying, because I make a lot of mistakes. I don't know about you, but it's nice to have something that you can, you know, quickly get, get access to. Um, but that's not the only, uh, that's a small downside. I mean, I, I wish it was a little bit different, but one of the nice things about the Remarkable and something that they've done well, so here's just the screen with the, everything. Um, they have a couple buttons on here. I believe you can also put on PDFs and stuff and look at them. Um, I don't want to show any on here because I don't know what uh, my wife has done with it. But anyways, um, one of the nice things about the Remarkable, and it's only I realized in relation to this other thing that I got for myself, is that um, things autosave here, which is really nice. When you leave a page, it saves, which is great because, you know, who wants to, you know, go back to the 90s where you had to remember to save everything? Um, I do not. But um, let's turn this off for now. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things that the Remarkable has going so well for it is that it just it just works. Like you take apps, uh, take notes, and they they're saved and everything. So here, this thing is huge. This is the the books. It's probably pronounced books, but the books, the Onyx Books Max Two, I believe, uh, with a few modifications. I've added little. Um, sticky pads here because the the power button is here on the bottom and if you want to put this up to use for sheet music which I do every once in a while it's nice to have you know not hitting the power button as an option but anyways one of the things you see between these two is the remarkable versus the onyx the onyx is huge this is a huge e-ink you never really realize just how much screen real estate you have. And this is like, you go back to, uh, oh, I, I used to love drawing in notebooks and stuff. But um, this is huge for, for like a device consideration, but it's nothing compared to what you used to be able to draw on and everything. Anyway, so here are some of the random things that I've been looking at. Um, so you can use your finger or the included pen. Um, this should work, theoretically. Sometimes when it first boots, it's a little weird, or it takes a little bit to get started. So anyways, it's great for sheet music. Um, what do we have here? Preludio number 12. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very nice. It's very easy. There's a few buttons down here that you can click to go forward and backward and back to the home screen. So you're never really stuck. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's go. There's also the ability to take notes. So let's click on that. Um, and this definitely doesn't seem to organize as well as the Remarkable. You have to kind of get used to what the Remarkable is doing. And maybe this also can do some things, let's see. Um, because this thing is so huge, it's actually hard to see it all in one screen. Um, but yeah, apparently you can add folders and stuff, but um, you kind of have to like go for it. So here we're just going to add a new page and show you what you can do. Hey, this is pretty good. So it didn't ship with the latest firmware. Um, and I'm kind of writing at a weird angle, and it's, yeah, this actually is pretty good. Um, I'm just not having it setting down, which is why it's a little bit hard. Um, what's nice about this is that you get most of your screen real estate, because um, you don't have your buttons, you know, along the side of the thing. Um, but then 
again, as with the remarkable, there's kind of this weird thing where, you know, here there's a lot of room, you know, horizontally, but you have to click twice if you want to do an eraser type of thing. And so there's two eraser, you know, presets, and this one, you know, you click and it, it kind of deletes things. The remarkable has a, you know, a better eraser for just like you just draw a line around things. That's great. Um, but uh, if you're ever like, oh, I just need to maybe, oh my goodness, that just deletes everything on the page. So um, that is definitely not a useful feature in my book. Like if I want to delete, whoa, this thing is, my camera is freaking out. If you want to delete stuff on the page, don't delete everything that is useless. If you really need to destroy a piece of document, there is a negative sign up here. I think that deletes the page, so don't do that. That's dumb. Um, that's just my small opinion. I haven't really tried. There's some other things here that you can do. You can make, apparently you can make triangles. Wow, this is the future. Okay, so anyways, um, it is kind of crazy to see that you can do browsing on this thing as well. Um, and of course you can use it as an HDMI second monitor. So it has an HDMI in, which is so strange, but okay. So what I'm looking for is down here in this corner, there's a browser and let's hope I, you know, do I want to turn weather on? Uh, yeah, I suppose I do. Turning Wi-Fi on. Okay. Okay, great. Web page not available. Okay, so here we are, and it's loading up a weather.com site about European mountaintops are blooming, but that's not a good thing. Anyways, so it's interesting that you can, you know, scroll through. This really is, you know, I say mockingly, this is the future because it is the past, but it's, I don't know, it's so weird to think this is an e-ink screen, but you can do this sort of thing. Um, anyways, as to other capabilities, um, let's back out of here. I'm trying to get out of here. Um, yeah, it's good for reading books and stuff. I don't know where I'm at in this, this book. Okay, but yeah, here we are, clean code. This is just, it's a huge, huge reading surface area. So again, it's its hard to get all within the monitor here or in, in picture, but yeah, very nice to read and, and everything. So again, it's just surprising how big it is when you're used to small devices. And that to me is kind of a bonus point. Um, the only kind of non-bonus point, so it has its own little thing for a pen. It gets its own huge uh, folder that you can sh stuff it in. Um, the only thing that's kind of annoying is that this pen is just like just there on the edge. So I mean I'm sure it's fine but I almost wish it had its own like dedicated spot even though that's kind of annoying. But it's like if you really want this tight you can kind of still feel the, the pen over here. Whereas with the Remarkable there it's got this nice little this little place here for the pen. So anyways, just a comparison of some of the technologies and stuff that's available. Um, but uh, yeah, no, uh, I'm not encouraging any of you to buy any of these. But, uh, and I was not given any money for any of these reviews. I, you know, bought these for using them and, and for our family and everything. But yeah, no, that's uh, some of the state of our, you know, inputs to computers and writing documents and stuff. And yeah, they're all, they all have, you know, they're all good in their own ways. Thanks.